Hi everyone. So I thought it would be interesting to share uh, a relatively recent find. Uh, this is a sword that I found at an antique show early uh, last year in 2020. Uh, and something I hear frequently from collectors is all the good swords are gone. There's nothing else out there to find. Uh, all the pieces that are available are picked through and getting something of real quality these days is, is just not possible. I continue to find great swords. I do invest a lot of time visiting antique shows, visiting gun shows, uh, looking online, and really interesting pieces do continue to surface. So I wanted to show this sword today, and this is really a kind of special piece for me because I have another sword from the same lineage. Uh, last year I also purchased a blade by Rin Tomomitsu. <clears throat> Rin Tomomitsu is the son of the famous Bizen smith Kanemitsu and he worked in the middle 1300s. Uh, this sword would be by Rinto Mitsu's grandson, the second generation of Mori Mitsu. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the blade out. So the second generation Mori Mitsu was uh, a smith who worked in the, generally the Oye period. Uh, and this is a dated example. So this blade is not only signed with his mei, it's signed Bishu, also funny Morimitsu, but it is dated uh, the 11th year of the Oi period, which is 1404. And he's known for exactly this type of Sugata. Uh, longer uh, Hirozukuri Wakazashi with shallow sore. Uh, his blades tend to have, as one of their types, a Suguha Hamon, so a straight Hamon, a very finely forged uh, Jihada, which is also typical of the Oi Bizen smiths. And his works do tend to have simple but really excellent horimono. In this case, I want to call out the ken. Uh, so you'll see that there is a carving of a Buddhist sword or horimono of a Buddhist sword. And then at the top of the horimono on each side is a bonji. Bonji are Sanskrit characters that are carved on swords. They typically have a relationship to Buddhism. Uh, in this case, each of the bonji are a different bodhisattva. Uh, so the bonji that we see, uh, there's a, a lot of different bonji out there. Uh, uh, Kwanon, uh, Furo Myo'o, Bishamonten, these are the kind of uh, bonji that are typically seen uh, on Japanese swords. But a beautiful piece, it is uh, ubu, so the sword has not been shortened. It has completely its original nakago, and as I mentioned, it's fully signed uh, and fully dated. So this goes into my list of swords that I will be sending out for polish uh, in the future. Everything that I have restored, for the most part, I send to Japan. Uh, I have a couple of individuals that I trust to handle the restoration process, and the, usually the process for me is to show the sword first to Tanabe-sensei, uh, have his assessment, and then I will go with the polisher that he recommends would be best uh, for the particular piece. Uh, one of the individuals that he often refers uh, collectors to for polish, if it's a Bizen sword, is Dodo-san. And Dodo-san tends to specialize in Bizen. So what I expect at this point is that this will go to Dodo-san for restoration. Dodo-san has another of my swords right now, the uh, Rin Tomomitsu that I mentioned before. Uh, and then after that, the restoration process is done, it will go for a Saigaki and uh, Shinza. So yeah, I just wanted to share this piece. And swords are still out there to be found. Uh, the most important thing I can say is invest the time in study. Uh, it's important not just to uh, be looking for particular signatures, like I, I know people frequently just looking for a may of Masamune, learn to identify quality. Learn so that even if you don't look at the inscription, if you don't look at the Nakago, look at the blade itself and try to identify if it's good workmanship. Uh, and then your decision-making process can go from there. So thanks so much, and I will share more videos soon.